Okay, can you hear me? Awesome. So, yeah, my name is Soren, and this is my first cult, and I'm really just here to ask for help. So, um, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, so, myself and my wonderful collaborator, uh, Osa Faraken, are interested in data analysis in nonlinear spaces. So, for instance, imagine that you observe a collection of rotation matrices, and you then want to build a classifier on top of those. Now, rotation matrices belong to a nonlinear Lie group, so you want to build a classifier that respected that Lie group. Likewise, imagine that you observe a collection of subspaces. This is something people do in domain adaptation, for instance. Subspaces are points on the Grassmannian, so we do want to uh, build systems that will respect the geometry of this Grassmann manifold. Another example, assume you want to build a model of the airway tree of the human lung. Um, well, the number of branches in such airway trees differ from person to person, so we have a top topologically changing data, and those can be shown to live in a cat zero space, uh, and et cetera, et cetera. There are many examples of this. Um, now, in these spaces, what uh, one reliable quantity that we can often compute is simply the distance between a pair of points. So, you know, assume you want to build a classifier, then what's more obvious than to just compute your geodesic distance, raise it to some quotient Q, scale it, take the exponential, and then plug the result into your favorite support vector machine or whatever. This seems like sort of a very uh, natural choice, and it's, uh, it's nice in the sense that you capture the geometry of the underlying space through the distance measure, and it's also fairly practical because you really just need to be able to compute distances. Okay, this is great, right? except it doesn't work. So um, you can generally show that this is not a positive definite kernel. Um, so in particular, if you pick uh, Q to be 2, so you said you get sort of a Gaussian kernel, then this is only a positive definite kernel for all values of lambda if your data space is Euclidean. Basically, Um, so just think of it in terms of the actual kernel matrix. So for any finite data set, the kernel matrix you get should have eigenvalues that are... Uh, and that's sort of independent of the actual geometry structure, right? So that would be one definition. Um, so basically, yeah, so we've shown this that, uh, for instance, the Gaussian kernel uh, will only be positive definite if your underlying data space is Euclidean. So this is really a bummer, right? I mean, basically shows that this otherwise wonderful strategy doesn't work. But there's a caveat, because it's for all lambda uh, that uh, this result holds. So basically, what we're asking you guys um, is can we perhaps find uh, ranges of lambda where we still might get a positive definite kernel? So why are we asking that question? Um, so here's sort of an empirical uh, experiment. We just sample uh, data from two classes on the unit sphere. Um, and then we compute, in the case of a Gaussian kernel, we just compute the uh, kernel matrices for a varying number of uh, bandwidths lambda and, com and uh, plot the smallest eigenvalue of that kernel matrix. And what we see is that there's sort of a large range where you actually get a positive definite kernel matrix. Now that's not the same as saying you get a positive definite kernel, but at least positive definite kernel matrix. Um, so. Um, this really shouldn't surprise you, right? I mean, if you take the limiting case of uh, the bandwidth going to zero, well, then your kernel matrix uh, will have the smallest eigenvalue of zero. Um, in the limiting case of lambda going to infinity, the smallest eigenvalue of the kernel matrix will be one. And since sort of the function describing the smallest uh, eigenvalue cha will change continuous, then this will sort of imp hint, I'm hand-waving here, uh, hint that there will be intervals where um, we should expect positive definite uh, kernel matrices. Um, so what we then sort of ask is, well, would, is such an interval useful? I mean, can you build useful classifiers and things like that? Uh, and so we just tried running a support vector machine on, uh, on this data, but only running it when we actually get a positive definite kernel matrix. And what we see is, so this is the classification accuracy, and this is the accuracy of the optimal classifier. You can see that you sort of get a fairly decently performing uh, classifier. So it would appear that there is a useful uh, range of uh, 
uh, of bandwidths uh, where you still have a positive definite uh, kernel matrix. So here are the conjectures, and they're loosely formalized. So you know, it's great if you can also help us just formalize those. So basically, we believe that there will be conditions on the actual underlying geodesic space, uh, as well as the spread of the data, such that you get a positive definite kernel matrix, or such that there will be a range of lambdas where you get a positive definite kernel matrix with high probability. So this is not the same as saying that there will be a positive definite kernel, just that the kernel matrix uh, with high probability should be positive definite. We find this empirically, and it would be sort of natural if that's the case, but we would like to formalize it. Um, so how would you sort of uh, put up conditions on your, um, on your data space? Well, it seems intuitive that this uh, has to do with the underlying nonlinearity of the data space. Um, so we expect that you're going to have to either study the curvature of the data space, probably in sort of in a global notion, um, or you should sort of look at the distortion induced by low distortion embedding. Those are our current best guesses at the moment. Um, finally, we sort of observe that you, s that you can get useful classifiers in this way, but we don't really have a good understanding of why that's the case, and would be nice to somehow be able to understand that better. So um, that's pretty much it, and if anybody can help me, do reach out to me. So thanks. <laughs>